Well, we're in day two now of the markup on the uh, cap and trade national energy tax bill. Yesterday and last night, I worked on amendments to try and get biomass fully covered and reduce uh, fires. We in this country have had catastrophic fire on our federal forests. Nine million acres a year go up in flames. Forty-seven percent of the Forest Service budgets consumed fighting fires. If you want to do what the IPC says we should do, and that is effectively manage America's forest lands, then you need to adopt the, this amendment to fix this one problem in the biomass definition, and I urge your support. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Unfortunately, uh, even though we got a bipartisan vote on it, we still came up a few votes short. Uh, the effect of which is that mostly all of the woody biomass off our federal forest land, especially those that are diseased and bug infected, uh, wouldn't count. You wouldn't be able to use that to produce new energy, uh, clean energy like we're doing to heat hospitals and, and power uh, uh, new electric generation facilities. None of that would count toward the renewable energy standard, which I don't understand. Because if that same woody biomass comes off private ground, it counts. But we've tried to put some safeguards for those who are going to pay the bill, the ratepayers, into this legislation, but they've been defeated. For example, we said if China and India don't go along with similar sorts of requirements on their economy, that, uh, uh, that this bill wouldn't take effect. And that if gasoline prices and electricity prices just skyrocketed, you'd have some sort of emergency valve, some exit ramp off this very costly piece of legislation. Unfortunately, those amendments were defeated. We're going to continue to protect, uh, try to at least, protect the ratepayers. The average people out there are trying to make ends meet from these high energy bills that everybody projects are coming. This legislation becomes law.